All right, today we're going to explore uh, some of these formulas. As it says, there are triangles, rhombi, and trapezoids. Uh, probably be on the side that has the, the pictures on it, up at the top, all six pictures. Uh, this first one here, technically, do you know mine's a square? This first one top left here by the looks of it. No, you don't. Okay. Now, if I put some important information in there, well, then perhaps then you would know. Do I know now that it's a square? No, good answer, because it could be a rectangle. Right? Yeah. How about now? Now we know for sure, right? I actually somewhat disagree with the book's uh, formula. I'll show you what they put in case you see it in the book. But then I'm just going to kind of relate it to something we already know. What the book says is this is a side. And so then they say this is also a side, and so is that one, and so is that one. And so they say just take the side and square it. Is that wrong? No. That's right. But what I say is, well, isn't the square just a special form of the parallelogram we've already learned? And the parallelogram was just base times height, right? And so you just take base times height. But remember, the base and the height have to hit each other at a right angle. So is the height going to be as hard to find in a square as it was in the parallelogram? Sometimes you had to figure out where it was. Well, no, it's whatever, wherever it is sitting in there. Now, you don't have to write this one necessarily in your notes, but for example, if I told you, you know, this was 4 right there, well, if that's the height, this one down here is also 4, so the area of that one would be 16 square units, correct? And so is it true just to take the side and square it? Yes, but let's just realize it is just a parallelogram, so we can actually use that particular formula. Uh, how about that object at top right here? I'd say that looks kind of like your rectangle there. Once again, they give that a completely different formula. Why would you do that? Isn't a rectangle just a form of a parallelogram? Why waste your time coming up with six different formulas for the same thing? If it's a parallelogram, you just have to find well, the base and the height. And we know that much for sure. So base and height. Once again, much easier to find on this one, correct? Now, on this next one, that's a parallelogram. So we already know this answer. But do you know why? Because on this one, I would say that right here is your right angle, correct? Why is it that a parallelogram is the same as these other ones? I just moved the triangle, and now I have a rectangle at very minimum. Could it possibly be a square depending on the problem? Yes. So that's why it's just base times height, because all it is is a, you can think of it this way, is a rectangle that's kind of been shelved and tipped a little bit. All right. So basically all they did is they cut this one off and put it over there. So it's still base times height. But again, is height a little bit harder to find sometimes on these? Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to do a little bit of work. Uh, sometimes, you know, your 30, 60, 90 cheat sheet or Sokotoa, things like that. So, so far, we have three of them that are the same. Well, that's kind of nice. So, would you say these three are all that hard? No. But you may notice that the book wanted to give them three completely separate formulas. I think that's a poor idea. Let's just learn one for all three of them and be done with it. Okay. All right, area of a triangle. I bet you most of you know that one or remember it from middle school. Anybody think they remember it for a triangle? Yeah. Yeah. Base times height divided by 2 is actually one way. I never used to write it that way. I'll be honest with you. I never used to write it like this. But people have in the, recently said they like it that way better. The way I always used to write it is, are those two the same thing? Yeah. But I have found way more people have been doing way better with the first one. They don't. Because what people have been trying to do, I don't know where this came from, but they had tried to distribute this half to both numbers. Don't know where that came from, but that is really bad. Now, if there was a plus between the base and the height, then yes, you would. So that's why I'm kind of going towards this first one here, base times height divided by 2, because can you mess up distributing on that one? No, which is why I'm kind of going and leaning towards that first one. And plus, then when I show you why that's the answer, it makes perhaps a little bit more sense. Does anybody believe they know why it's base times height divided by 2? Or are you just happy enough just remembering it? Anybody know why? No? 
attached. Parallelogram, agreed. The area that's base times height, agreed. How much of it do I have? Half of it. That's why it's base times height divided by 2, because you actually have half of it. And did you notice that the height ended up being the same both ways? No matter, you know, whether whichever dotted line you want to use there, it's still the height, right? And so that's why it's base times height divided by 2, not just because. All right. So keep that in mind. I think we're going to come back to rhombus because that's going to be an interesting one to see who can come up with why that is the way it is. But I will tell you for the rhombus, if you are given the height and the base, is that still a parallelogram? If you're given both of those bits of information, can you just do base times height? Yes, you can. You might want to make a note of that off to the side. If given the base and the height, you can just use that. Is that the formula I want you to write here? Not really. But you can write it off to the side. If it's a parallelogram, you can use base times height and you're done. I'm going to show you the one that the book gives you, and really it ends up probably being the more important one. Anybody uh, ever remember a trapezoid? Remember hearing that one? Yeah. If you're wrong, it's okay. Give it a shot. Okay, close. It's close. What you do is you take the height times base 1 plus base 2 and divide it by two. Now, once again, that's not the way that I was taught to write that formula. I was taught to write a one-half out front. But you notice why I'm not writing it that way anymore, because way too many people are trying to distribute that thing all over the place, and they're distributing it wrong. So it's not the formula that's causing a problem, it's their algebra that's causing a problem. And having it this way seems to save a lot of people. Okay, so uh, why is that the, the uh, formula? Let's just label these things here. We'll call this uh, base 1 up here, right? And base 2. Do you agree the way that we kind of have it right now, base 1's a little shorter based on the way we labeled it? Hmm. Well, what happened last time we had to divide by 2? Why was there a divide by 2? Because we only had half of something, right? Well, what did we do last time? Well, we... What do you have now? Parallelogram. Would you agree that's base times height, right? But... If this longer one down here is base 2, right, I would call this base 2, right, because that matches, right, the bottom and top there. And, right, this would be base 1 now because I flipped it over. Do you agree to get this entire side, I do have to add them? Do you agree the height is the same in both locations? Yeah. So basically right here you're taking base times height. But that would give me that whole red object there. I don't want the whole red object. I just want half of it, which is why you divide by 2. Okay? That's why. And if somebody came in right now, that would look very, very confusing. As you can see, I gave myself a note up there that says next page to show rhombus. All right, so let's go to the next page. That's just for me, not for you. Do you agree that's pretty much the same rhombus we had just on the other side there? Huh. Now, in a rhombus, well, we'll come back to that. We'll see what happens. Hopefully this works. Do you agree those are the pieces? The reason I have a copy in blue over there is so that you can see where things used to be. That's where it looked like originally, right? Can anybody put those pieces back together so that it forms something we know? Other than the rhombus? Would you like to try? Huh. Would anybody like to come up and try and put those pieces back together? It's like a puzzle. And actually form something we know the area of. Oh, it's fine. It'll only be out there for eternity on YouTube. They won't know who it is. Want to try it? See, I didn't say a name there. Nobody's ever going to know. And I was even struggling with it. I mean, I was struggling to get it to pull apart. 
Yeah, and just get close. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be perfect. <laughs> okay, so do we get two triangles? Yeah, that is one way you could actually do it. Uh, not the one I was looking for, but that is actually very clever. Okay, not. So you can just tell me what to do if you'd like. I think I know what he's saying, but I'm going to have to move this one based on what he's saying. Like so you're saying? Well, that technically works. Not what I was looking for, but that does technically work. Because diagonals do have to come together in this. Do you agree diagonals do have to hit each other at a... Right angle. Is mine a little off? Yeah, but I, there was only so much I could do. Because right in here, do you agree? That's supposed to be, well, that's a perfect color for in there. Yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to come together at right angles, right? So, wait a minute. This green little piece right here, do you agree that's basically half of this diagonal here? And then I took the other green piece. So, do you agree this, we'll call that diagonal one? Do you agree that whole green piece ends up being right there? And do you agree then that this red piece right here, it's not the entire diagonal, is it? If you look back at the original, it's how much of that other diagonal? Half. So this is basically half of diagonal 2. Do you agree with that? Now, why would I mention that? Because isn't that a parallelogram that we have made here now? And if I take, we'll call this maybe the base is diagonal 1. Then we have to take it times the, that other one over here, which is the height, right? Does everybody agree with that, that that's the height? Which is half diagonal 2. That right there will give you the formula for a rhombus, if you're given the diagonals. Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, take half. Because one of those diagonals, half of one of those diagonals ends up being your height. Okay? And then obviously the other um, diagonal ends up being your base. And that's why that works. Not normally the way that I've put it together, but this works. Okay? Yeah, it's just, it depends on how you want to have it worked. But Whoa. Well, that was pretty cool, but not what I wanted to have happen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So if you want to go back here, it is 1 half, diagonal 1, diagonal 2. But remember, what is your other option on this one if it's given is just base times height if you have those two bits of information. But a lot of times what they are is going to make you deal with the diagonals. And don't forget, you know, if this is, say, 4 right here, what's the other one over there is 4. Remember that? Or if this one's, say, 3, then this one is three, and actually you should be able to tell me one of those sides now because look at all those right triangles we have in there. Okay? So keep that in mind with the rhombus. It can be one of the trickier ones. All right, why don't you take a second to uh, try that one right there and I will save the recording.